are something the whole universe is doing in the same way that a wave is something that the whole ocean is doing. What you do is what the whole universe is doing at the place you call here and now. The real you is not a puppet which life pushes around. The real deep down you is the whole universe. What's up everybody and welcome to episode 10 of my poker vlog. Today we're going to mix it up a little bit we're going to talk about the mental game of poker. Now when I say mental game I'm not just talking about all the math and probability that goes into the analysis of a poker hand. I'm also talking about the mental state with which we approach the poker table. I'm no spring chicken, I'm almost about 40 years old now, and I've noticed as I get older that this becomes more and more important for my game. For me, I've found that things like exercise, diet, quality of sleep, and meditation all can have some fairly big impacts on poker. Now, I'm certainly not one of these people that obsesses over these things. I believe heavily in moderation, so that means cheeseburgers, beer, and the occasional laziness are still on the menu. But I have definitely started to pay more and more attention to these factors. I have found that meditation is particularly useful for poker players. The whole idea behind meditation is to have better thoughts, and if you have better thoughts, that means you'll make better decisions, which could translate into more profit at the poker table. If you are interested in meditation, I think that a good place to start would be the Sam Harris Waking Up app. It just came out for the iPhone and Android. I've been using it and so far I'm really liking it. Uh, the, my favorite thing about it is that it strips away some of the woo-woo aspects of meditation because Sam's approach is from the approach of a neuroscientist. So he's really only speaking about meditation in a way that a scientist would speak about it, how it can actually benefit your mind in objective ways. Uh, full disclosure, I'm not sponsored or paid to promote this in any way. I'm just passing along something that I think is pretty cool. The voice you heard at the beginning of this video is from Alan Watts. And although he's passed away now, he has some pretty interesting stuff that you can also find. So the last two weeks have been a little rough. Uh, I've been going through a cold and the kids have been going through colds as well. So really haven't gotten to play a lot of poker, but I'm feeling a lot better today. So I think it's time we get back on the felt. Uh, it's a week night, so it's highly likely that the 5-5 no limit game will not be running. And if that's the case, I'm gonna jump in and play some 1-3 PLO. Let's see if we can continue the vlog run good with a couple extra cards in the mix. I'm not sure if you, the vlog watcher, are that interested in Pot Limit Omaha hands, but if you are, please let me know in comments because it's been kind of my assumption that most people want to hear me talk about Hold'em hands, but there is a ton of awesome Pot Limit Omaha action here in Houston, and we can definitely get some of those hands on the vlog if people are interested. For me personally, it's pretty important that I try to get better at a game like PLO because of the sheer popularity here in Houston. The bigger stakes games in Houston are almost exclusively PLO, so if we want to keep building a bankroll and moving up stakes, at some point we're going to have to make the transition, and I think that transition would be a lot easier if we can sort of build it from the 1-3 level and then move up. So it's a few days after our poker session, and we're going to run over some hands. Now I think 
Y'all are going to like this. I've got a ton of hams to review this time, so we're going to speed through some of them and maybe take a little bit longer on the ones that warrant discussion. So we buy in for 500 at the 1-3 pot limit Omaha game. The first hand we're going to talk about, we are $400 effective. Our hand is 4, 6, 9, 10 double suited. There's several limpers in front of us, so we go ahead and over limp from the hijack. It gets all the way to the big blind who raises to 25. There are four callers in front of us, so we go ahead and call. Our hand is definitely not a very good one, but with this many people calling the razor, I think we are okay calling here. The flop is 378 with two hearts. This is a decent flop for us. We've got a 12 card wrap and a flush draw. Now our flush draw is not very strong, but a lot of our wrap outs will give us the nuts. The big blind leads out for pot, which is 150, and it folds to us. There's nobody left to act behind us, and we cover big blind. He only has about 225 total, so 75 left after the 150 bet. So I feel like this is a pretty big no-brainer. We go ahead and shove in, and the big blind calls. Big blind asks if I'd like to run it twice. I typically like to do whatever my opponent wants to do in these situations, so I agree. The board runs out with a jack on one of the boards and a five on the other board, which means on both boards we have a straight, we show our hand, and it's good. In this next hand, we have ace-10, jack-4, single-suited. There's a straddle for $6 and two limpers in front of us, and we go ahead and bump it up from the low jack to 25. Button and hijack both call, so we're not going to have position in this hand. The flop comes king-7-3, rainbow, with no clubs. So we will not be making a flush in this hand. I don't see any reason to take a stab at this one. Our hand is pretty bad. We don't have too much going on except maybe a couple marginal backdoor draws. So we check and the low jack bets pot. The high jack calls and we make a pretty standard fold. I don't really remember how this one rolled out, but it turned out that the low jack had ace king king and flop top set. In the next hand, we pick up our first pocket aces of the night. We have ace, ace, king, nine, single suited. There's a straddle on and a couple limpers in front of us, and we go ahead and bump it up to 35 from middle position. We get four callers. Not super great. We're going to be playing this hand out of position, and we are playing a hand that, although it has a pretty good amount of equity in this situation, it's going to be hard to realize that equity. The flop comes queen, queen, eight with two hearts. This is not a particularly good flop for us. There's going to be a lot of high cards in the ranges of our opponents. So the likelihood that we're already up against trip queens is pretty good. Obviously, if this was Hold'em, we would like our pocket aces a lot better. But in this situation, they're just not super strong. Early position, who originally had limped the straddle and then called my raise, leads out for a 125. We still have two players left behind us to act. I would say that this bet uh, typically represents strength. He could be betting here with the nut flush draw, but considering that he's betting into four other people, I think that I uh, probably would weight him towards stronger hands, such as having a queen. If we had any other draws, I would definitely call, but since all we really have here is an overpair, I go ahead and lay it down. So the fourth hand we're going to talk about, we have king, king, eight, six in late position. Middle position raises to $15 and there are two callers. It comes to us and we go ahead and put in a three bet. We make it 75. The original better calls and we're going to a flop. The flop is five, seven, seven rainbow. The middle position player leads out for 225 and he's only got about 50 left behind. With the overpair and an open-ended straight draw, I think this is a pretty easy play. I go ahead and shove in for the 275, that'll put them all in, and he calls. We get some good news when the turn is a nine, giving us a straight, and the river is a blank. We go ahead and flip our hand up, and the player says, no good. He flopped trips and turned a boat with nine, seven, ten jack. 
In this hand, we are 900 effective. I alluded earlier that we had our first set of pocket aces, and now we're gonna talk about the second time we got pocket aces this session. This time we had ace, ace, queen, three, single suited. It's a straddle pot, and middle position makes it 30. There's two callers when it gets to me, and I go ahead and stick in the three bet. We make it 150. Middle position thinks for a little bit and sticks in the four bet, making it 410. We are more than happy to get it all in pre here, but I decide that I'm just gonna flat and I'm most likely never going to fold on the flop if he sticks the rest in. The flop is king seven five rainbow. The king is an interesting card. It hits our range better than it hits his. He's going to have pocket aces more, and I'm going to have pocket kings more, considering I'm just flatting the 4-bet. But he goes ahead and he sticks in the remainder of his stack, which is 490. This flop is extremely dry, and I think that he's probably not 4-betting with kings very often. So I don't think we can lay our hand down. We go ahead and make the call. So the majority of the time, this is going to be a split pot, and that was the result on this occasion. So about this time in the night, we've been playing Omaha for about four hours, and they make the announcement that they're going to start the 5-5 No Limit table. So, of course, being that I always want to play in the 5-5 game anytime it's running, we go ahead and jump in that game. So the 5-5 game gets started six-handed. We're in for a 1,000. Everybody at the table agrees that we want to add a mandatory $10 under the gun straddle. So effectively, this is a 5-5-10 game. At this point, I got the camera out and started filming at the table. I generally don't film at the table because I personally found it to be a little distracting. Um, and also, I wasn't really sure on the policy of Prime Social Club as far as filming goes. But... I saw Brad Owen do it, and I figured it's better to beg for forgiveness than ask permission. So this next hand, we have Ace, Jack of Diamonds. There's a limper in early position, and it folds to us in small blind. We go ahead and raise to 55, and the early position player calls. The flop is Queen, 4, 8 with two diamonds. Action starts with us, and heads up, we definitely want to put in a bet here. We need to have some semi-bluffs in our range, and the nut flush draw is a perfect one to have. So we lead out for 125. Early position folds, and we take the pot without much of a fight. So in this next hand, we're going to sweat a player in the 5-5 games. His name's Anthony, cool dude that plays in the 5-5 a lot. He has queen jack of hearts, and he's on the button. He puts in a raise and gets one caller. The flop is ace jack three with two hearts. Pretty good flop for him. Flops middle pair and a flush draw. The other player checks, and Anthony also checks. Now, I definitely think he could have put in a bet here, but checking is also okay. The turn is a king of hearts, and Anthony puts out a bet of 75. The player thinks for a bit and folds. As he's folding, he flashes a jack, so I don't want to be results-oriented on the way the hand played out, but it definitely seems like in this particular hand, he could have got a little more value out of his queen jack if he had bet the flop. So that's going to do it for our hand reviews. Had a couple other decent hands at the 5-5 game, but I wasn't really taking very good notes at that point. It was late in the night, and I was having a few whiskeys. Overall, it was a pretty good night. We cashed out of the Pot Limit Omaha game with a $30 profit. But we made up for it in the 5-5 No Limit game, and we cashed out with a profit of $18.45. We played another session of 1-3 Pot Limit Omaha a few nights later, and in that session we booked a win of $6.50. So that's going to wrap up the poker for today. A couple things happened this week that we can talk about briefly. We took my son to meet Santa Claus for the first time. The interesting thing about Santa Claus is that he's actually my father-in-law. Now, of course, my son didn't know this, and he was not too happy when he was put on Santa's lap. I do feel kind of bad. I know it's a time-honored tradition to have your kid cry on Santa's lap around this age, which she's almost two. But, you know, as a father, uh, it, does, it does hurt me to see him so upset. 
Luckily, he hung around for about the next 10 to 15 minutes, and you could tell he was really curious about this Santa guy. So he sat there, he looked at him, he looked at him, and eventually he finally got the courage. He went up to him, and so we took the opportunity, and we got photo op number two, which was much better. He still looked a little bit sketched out, but... I mean, hey, it's a strange old man with a beard wearing a silly costume. So I think it makes sense to be a little sketched out. I also took my oldest son on a Cub Scout camp out and he made his first fire. I was pretty proud of him because at first he was definitely a little afraid of the whole fire thing. But by the end of it, he was a pro. So good job, Tex. And also, congratulations, because last week he crossed over and is now a Boy Scout. Well, that's going to do it for this vlog, and I hope you enjoyed the fact that I tried to include a lot more hands this time. Some of the hands were probably pretty boring, but I tried to go through them quickly and not spend too much time on the hands that don't have a lot of analysis needed. I want to comment on the fact that we hit 500 subs a couple days ago. So thank you so much to everybody that's subbed to this channel. When I started it about three months ago for the Andrew Nimi vlog challenge, I wasn't even sure that I would make it to the five vlogs, let alone 10, which is where we're at now. If you want to support the channel and you haven't already subbed, please do. Also, you can follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. I always put a link down below, and I'd appreciate if you come follow me on there. I also want to tease some upcoming vlogs in January. I'm taking a trip to New Orleans, and then in February, we're going to be hitting up Vegas. So look forward to doing some vlogging in those spots, mix it up a little bit, change the scenery, and hopefully we can continue the vlog run good that we've gotten so far. Thanks, everybody, and enjoy your holidays. Hello, camera. I'm right here, bro. Bruh. 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 I'm right here. I'm getting so oh my god. Seriously? Did you forget how to camera? Thank you. Thank you, camera. Thank you.